Rosewood, Texas, August 6th, 1966. Three teenagers are enjoying their time at a school at a local baseball field. Little did they know their night would end tragically as they were being hunted by one of the most prolific serial killers of our time. Edna, known as Louise Sullivan, Mark Dunham, Robert Brand, would be approached by a man with a gun. The two boys were ordered out of the vehicle. The two boys were shot at point-blank range and placed in the car's trunk. Louise Sullivan would sit up front and be raped by both men. After the rape of Louise McDuff and his accomplice, Roy Dale Green, would drive to a secluded area where McDuff would rape Louise again with a broomstick and strangle her to death. The two men would quickly become suspects, as Green had a conscience and would confess to the murders the following day. He explained that he and McDuff were going to scare the group of teenagers, but it was McDuff that surprised him when shooting the two boys, and he says he only raped Louise because he didn't want to be killed too. McDuff would be joined in court by his pistol-packing mother named Addie McDuff. She would be present as the court read the death penalty verdict. Then, in 1972, a group of individuals started protesting against the death penalty. The protests quickly escalated and resulted in a judge deeming the death penalty unconstitutional and all death penalty cases would be vacated to life in prison sentences. In 1989, the Texas prison system would be faced with prison overcrowding and would start paroling individuals. McDuff would be one of 127 convicted murderers to be paroled. It is widely thought that McDuff would get out of prison and start right back on his murdering ways, stalking out his victims in the night. Within three days of his release, he would happen upon Safari Parker. She would be found October 14, 1989 strangled to death. McDuff would not be charged in the case, however, would be sent back to prison on a parole violation. The prison system still plagued with overcrowding would soon release McDuff yet again. Within five days of each other, both Brenda Thompson and Regina Deanne Moore would be murdered by McDuff. On December 29, 1991, McDuff and an accomplice would be driving around downtown Austin when they would happen upon Colleen Reed at a local car wash. Colleen would be kidnapped, raped, and murdered. February 24, 1992, near a local college, McDuff's next victim would be found in a shallow grave. Her name was Valencia Joshua. McDuff's final known victim would be Melissa Northrup. She was a pregnant cashier at a local Waco Quick Pack, which coincidentally was where McDuff once worked. She would be kidnapped, raped, and murdered. This case received increased media coverage and ultimately McDuff would be captured. McDuff would be linked to the murders of eight individuals five of which happened after the release of his death sentence. The trial of a century would unfold with many an outrage he was released in the first place. Texas would be scrutinized over the release and the only good thing that ever came from McDuff is the Texas prison system became what it is known for today. McDuff's trial would go all the way to the jury and like a scene out of 12 angry men, 12 jurors would decide the fate of McDuff and ultimately choosing death again. November 17, 1998, after many delays, McDuff's execution would be scheduled. McDuff would make his way to the death chamber where he would be killed with a lethal cocktail of drugs and in good fashion, he would be buried at the jail cemetery with only his prison number and date of death.
Don't forget to show your support by subscribing and liking our videos. We try to upload new content every Sunday. Also, leave comments on cases you would like to see in future videos.